Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Marriott Hotel in Glasgow. I've got to tell you a story. After Ricky Burns lost in his last fight to Terence Crawford, I was leaving the arena. I was, I was pretty pissed off. Excuse my French. And this bloke came up to me, who'd obviously had a few too many beers, and he went, I suppose that Scottish boxing fuck then. And I thought, no, we're actually only just getting started. And look at how many people we've got in here today. I mean, we must have had a dozen press conferences here since we started working up here with Ricky and Alex. And there's probably four times as many people here today as there are for any press conference we've ever had. So the answer to that man who had too many buckfasts, or whatever it is that you have, that you'd like to have on the slide, is we're only just getting started. And this bill will be our best bill yet, because it's the comeback. It's the comeback of Ricky Burns. It's the comeback of your champion. And I'm so excited to take him on this new journey, because it's very nice having the belt, and it's very enjoyable. But this journey is going to be so much more enjoyable. New era, new trainer, new mission, new targets for Ricky Burns, and so many other great fights on the bill that I'm so excited about Friday the 27th of June at the Brayhead Arena. Anyway, I just thought I'd come out with that first of all. There is one person missing here today, which I'm sure you're all devastated to see, because we were expecting some fun and games, and that's Mr Waddy Camacho. No problems. But we were informed yesterday by the Scottish Area Council that Waddy Camacho must appear before them um, to have his licence reviewed following the last press conference between Stephen Simmons and Waddy Camacho. And we didn't think it was a good idea to bring him up here and, and question um, that hearing. So Waddy will appear before the Scottish Area Council on June the 1st. He would, of course, challenge Stephen Simmons for the WBC International cruiserweight title on June the 27th and I have a little note here from our friend Mr Camacho which I'll read out shortly. Just to take you through a few members of the table, down the end young Michael Roberts, um, super featherweight, going to be involved in a big fight on June the 27th at Brayhead. To his right, someone that we're delighted to welcome, Willie Limond, the current Commonwealth light welterweight champion. I'm so excited to have Willie on the show and I'm more excited about the actual fight that he's in. I think it's a, a wonderful fight. Alex Morrison, once again, pleasure to deal with him. Always true to his word. A great <coughs> bunch of fighters, great team up here. A very big part of what we're doing in Scotland. To, to my immediate left, Stephen Simmons, I believe one of the top cruiserweights in the country. Um, he has what can only be described as a, a cracking grudge match on June the 27th against Wadi Camacho. To my right, again, that man Ricky Burns, the former two-weight world champion, will be a three-time champion of the world, hopefully by the end of this year. He'll challenge Dejan Zlatakanin from Serbia and Montenegro after the fight was ordered by the WBC for the international title and an eliminator for the world title. Um, Figueroa fights Estrada for that WBC title. We make no secrets of the plan. Ricky wants the green and gold belt and we hope to deliver him a shot at that belt before the end of the year. To his right, one of the, uh, the shortest retirements in British boxing history, which is Curtis Woodhouse, who promised me that if he beat our fighter Darren Hamilton, he would definitely retire. Well, here he is, challenging Willie Lemon for the British and Commonwealth light welterweight title in just a, a fantastic fight. Two great lads, two great fighters. You know exactly what you're going to get. Um, that fight in association with Coldwell Boxing. David Coldwell, pleasure to be working again with him. <laughs> Next to him, John Slowey, who's in a great fight for the Scottish fans against Chris Hughes for the Scottish featherweight title and Celtic title. And David Brophy down the end, who's now ready for his big step up on June the 27th. I'm going to ask everyone at the, the table to say a few words, starting with Michael. Michael, you love selling a ticket. That's one of the reasons we love you. Oh, thanks very much. And back, back at Brayhead on the 27th. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to box again on Ricky's undercard. I'm going to try and get down to featherweight. Let's fight and see how I go for there. Seems to be more opportunities than it fell away, so I'm going to take it for there and see how I go. Good. A great, a great way. And John, one of those featherweights in there. Chris Hughes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Chris is a good fighter, you know, and last time out he thought he won it, so 27th of June we'll see who the champion is. 
And David, I know that after the last fight against, against Ambler, you're ready now. You had a good eight rounds last time. Ready, um, perhaps, for that first title fight. Yeah, hopefully, um, I feel as if I'm ready to step up a bit to, uh, opponent-wise. Um, always grateful to be on these shows. Always a good, good thing to be a party, especially being a young boy from Scotland. Um, always, I'm going to prepare right, back training hard, so on the day I'll, I'll be ready for whatever comes away. It's up to, it's up to Alex and Eddie, whoever I fight, but I'll be ready on the day. Talking of uh, the WBC International Cruiserweight title, just a, a note from, from Wadi Camacho. It's, it's not blue, it's quite straightforward, and I'll just read it out before we get the comments of, of Stephen. He says, I'm gutted I couldn't be there today, but it's only the press conference, and I'm sure there'll be another one for us to have a face-to-face -face discussion. On a positive note, I can go and train today and put some more miles in the bank. A lot of things were exchanged at the last press conference, me, me and Simmons were out, and a few things were said on Twitter too. I thought I was quite humble last time, and he was the one who woke up on the wrong side of the bed and went crazy. This time, I'm going to just let my fist do the talking. I was very disappointed that the first fight was cancelled. And I've been away in a great training camp. I've had a fantastic camp and looking forward to teaching him a lesson. Obviously, he must have been sparring with a child to hurt his ribs. I just hope that he trains hard, but not too hard, because he might hurt himself again. We don't want that because everybody in England and in Scotland wants to see this fight. On the 27th of June, I'm going to bring it to him and do what I do best. I'm looking forward to walking out of the Brayhead Arena. It's exciting to be fighting there against him and everyone else in there. There was one thing that I wanted to come up today and tell Simmons to his face. He's 100% sure that he won't be smelling the canvas. So I want him to make a friendly bet with me. After the fight, when I win, I want him to say, yeah, buddy, in front of all his fans. I want him to agree to say it. I'm willing to accept to do something in return, but I won't lose. When I land, he will go. I also want to add that I didn't know he was raising money for charity when he was wearing that dress on Twitter. He was doing a great thing, and I will personally donate to that charity as well. I didn't want to be disrespectful. So there you go, Stephen. I know that the plan today was to be humble and shake each other's hands. He's not there. We won't do a lot of smack talk, but please talk to us about the fight. I know you've been training hard in Marbella with Danny. And uh, you seem a lot more <coughs> calm and on the level today. I've had some calming pills. Uh, <laughs> I'd just like to, first of all, um, thank my sponsors, Giant Eye Scaffolding, Wood Roofing, Denman Fall of Trucks, Trend Clothing, Scottish Solar and Select Blinds. Uh, without them, I wouldn't be here today. They've helped me out a lot. Um, also, like to thank MGM Marbella, Top Gym, and uh, really looked after us, Daniel, Chris, and the Taffinator, um, all top guys, and it's it's great to be training out there. Um, at least you got to understand what Wadi was saying because it was read out to you and not said by him. Uh, I brought some cookies for him as well today. He's going to feed him. But, uh, yeah, training's gone really well. Um, been out in Marbella for four weeks. Uh, it's been top glass. Um, and look to be going out after I get married in three weeks um, to get back to hard work. But I'll be working hard over here in Morrison's gym. Um, but, yeah, looking forward to the fight. Um, <laughs> you he won't awesome. be getting no yeah buddy out of me. The only yeah buddy he'll get is when I'm leaning over him when he's lying on the canvas. Uh, that's when I say yeah buddy. In fact, I won't. <coughs> uh, <laughs> oh, and he was being disrespectful with the dress. I wore the dress for charity. You, uh, had, lo you had lovely legs, though. Of course. Funny? People were like, oh, if you were, if you were really a woman, then... <laughs> I didn't know many who said that. Oh, Lord said it, by the way. I'll make a hot female. <laughs> Cheers, Stephen. I've got to say, this fight, he's, he's such a great fight. And obviously, look, I've known Waddy for a long time. He's a, he's, a, he's a good kid, and he's up for this fight. And the one thing you've got to say about Waddy Camacho is, is that he is going to walk into an arena in front of 6,000 Scots, and he's going to get one of the worst receptions you've ever heard. But in a sick kind of way, I think he's quite looking forward to it. I don't know why. But someone that I know is looking forward to it 
is Curtis Woodhouse. And when I told him just out there in the foyer that I've never experienced an atmosphere or reception um, that you hear in Glasgow, his face just lit up. And he knew they weren't going to be for him. So welcome, Mr. Woodhouse. And I think probably a quick round of applause for Mr. Woodhouse after... Uh, That, that victory to win the British title, let's be honest, against the odds. And uh, to say a few words, firstly, um, on behalf of Curtis, Dave Coldwell, about the fight itself and, and obviously the Cinderella story, which you look to continue in Glasgow. Yeah, the, the dream was always for Curtis to become British champion. Um, and he promised me, along with everybody else, that you know, when, he, when he won the British title, he'd hang up his gloves and that would be it. Um, so we, it was quite an emotional night going back to February 22nd, and um, when he won the title, it was, you know, it was fantastic. One of the best things that I've ever experienced in boxing, if not the. Um, you know, and as far as I was concerned, that was it. It was all done, and mission was accomplished. I started getting a few alarm bells ringing when, you know, two days later, he's ringing me up saying, "Oh, people are stopping me. People are telling me how, how great I did and how, how, how well I did." And, you know, I'm now a champion and everyone wants to know me. I thought, oh, don't, you know, I don't want him to get too excited about it. And then as the weeks was going on, he was telling me more stories about how the fans had responded. So I kind of blamed the boxing fans for, for him coming out of his retirement um, because the way that they responded to him and took to him and wished him so much, you know, so much well, um, that's made him want a little bit more of it. And he said to me, he says, how can I, you know, how can I walk away from that? Um, so I understand where he's coming from, um, but also the, the, the part where we spoke about carrying on, if we do carry on, what we're going to do, was that it has to be challenges and it has to be fights where he's got that fear in him. It's not a case of just defending him against a young prospect coming through. No disrespect to anybody else out there, but, you know, Curtis, now, now his dream is accomplished. It's about how far he can get, but we need the challenges, and he needs to have that motivation, that fear. And, you know, in a fight with Willie, we know that we've got that. We know that we've got a quality operator who's boxed, you know, he's boxed Derek Morales, for God's sake. You know, he's, 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 he's been at the top, you know. Um, he's very experienced, well-schooled, gritty, determined. He's a great fighter. And that puts fear into Curtis, and that makes Curtis want to work hard and, and gives him the motivation to carry on. So we know that there's no thoughts of, you know, the alarm bells that myself, myself and Ryan, his trainer, were, were talking about beforehand. If Curtis carries on, he's going to have that same drive, same nation. It's there, you know. And the thing is, there's another title on the belt for him. So he's a challenger, so it's something for him to gain. It's not just defending his title. I've been very, very fortunate to experience the Scottish crowds working with Ricky. And I've been in that ring when, you know, the crowds are on Ricky's side, but I've also heard how they respond to the opponents. Now this time, I'm going to be, you know, in the away corner, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a different experience. But the Scottish crowd, I mean, I said to Curtis when we, when we made this fight, it's fantastic. It's the best atmosphere I've been to, you know, I've, I've, I've been lucky to, to be in everywhere, but it is the best atmosphere. And we're looking forward to that. Um, and I'm looking forward to it as well. It's going to be a great fight. Two really good fighters, two great champions, um, two honest champions that are going to go out there and give it what the fans want. You know, they're not, you're not going to see you no know, fancy Dan stuff. You're going to see two guys going there and, and put it all online. It's going to be an exciting fight. Thanks, Dave. And uh, Curtis, last time I was at a press conference with you, you were telling me how you were going to win this British title and that without doubt that was it for you. Yeah. So. Firstly, explain yourself and uh, talk to us about this fight that I know you're very excited about. Yeah, well, like I, like I said to, to everybody, you including everyone at the last press conference, you know, when I um, won the British title, the aim was to, to walk away as champion. But you kept ringing me, offering, <laughs> offering me more and more and more money. <laughs> um, no, listen, I came back for one simple reason, that I just, um, I didn't want to leave with a million what ifs, you know. I didn't want to be sat in my bed thinking, oh, if only, could I maybe have become British and Commonwealth champion? Could I maybe have fought for the European title? You know, I make no bones about it, and 
I'm, I'm a big boxing fan. I study boxing, history and everything. I know how my career is going to end. Um, probably like most boxers, it'll, it'll end flat on my back or flat on my face. I don't want it to end with a what if. You know, I want to see how far I can go and just keep trying to climb mountain after mountain until one mountain will be too big. Will that be June the 27th? Until you get there, you never know. Um, but I'm, I'm training like a challenger for this fight. I put the belt away four or five weeks ago, not touched it, not looked at it, totally dismissed it. In my eyes, I'm, I'm not the British champion. I'm challenging for the Commonwealth title, and that's that. So I come up here uh, June the 27th, looking to put everything on the line, fight like it's my life depends on it. Um, and Willie's in for a tough fight, I know that. Um, and I know I am as well. I wanted to fight somebody that the fans had given me universal respect for fighting, a good fighter like Willie. You know, you look at his record, it, it has been in with the best that Britain's had to offer over the last, I don't know, he's been a pro 10, 15 years, you know, he's a, he's a top, top fighter. And only, you only beat Willie Lemon if you're the real deal. So this is the type of fight I needed. I needed to, to know where I'm at. You know, if, if, I, if, if I beat Willie Lemon, I'm the real deal. If I, if I don't, then I'm not. You know, so I'm here to ask questions about myself. I didn't, I didn't want to fight, a, like Dave said, a young up-and-coming prospect because I knew I wouldn't be able to motivate and get that same motivation as I got for the Darren Hamilton fight. I wanted to fight someone that put the fear of God into me. And that was one of the reasons why I came up to Scotland as well. You know, I, I've never been to a live Ricky Burns fight. I sparred him and that was bad enough. So, um, But just watching it on the TV... Um, you can hear the atmosphere through the television and, and when um, when Dave rang me up and says, do you fancy fighting Willie Limond? I was like, yeah, definitely. I thought the fight was going to be in Hull, I'll be honest. <laughs> and then when he said, it's, uh, do you fancy going to Scotland? I was like, yeah, 100%. I think he only told you that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I'm, I can't wait. Like, so normally fighters struggle if there's no atmosphere. You know, if there's 10, 15 people in the arena, it's, some, it's sometimes difficult, but... The place is going to be packed, and I think I've done six or seven tickets myself, so no doubt they'll be getting right behind me. But you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Willie will have great support in there, and it'll be a great fight. I believe, you know, people talk about 50-50 fights, but I, I believe this is a genuinely 50-50 fight. You know, if I'm at my very, very best, I believe I'll win. If I'm 90%, I'll get beat. So this is this is a fight that, like I said, makes me nervous, excites me, scares me, ticks every box that makes me want to come back. Um, so here I am. Good stuff. You're, you're going to love it, Willie. Yours might be. A, you don't have to talk for as long as Curtis. You know he does. He does. He, he does after there. dinner speaking. Everyone. He don't uh, there. Honestly, it's a great set that he does. <coughs> no, it's it's great to be back on the the big shows again. So it just feels as if I've been under the radar the last kind of two and a half, three years. But just like to thank Alec Morrison and Eddie Hearn for giving me this opportunity to fight Curtis Woodhouse for. His British, my Commonwealth, and I think it's cut says going to be a great fight. You know, as I respect him, I've seen, I've actually followed his career. I like the way he goes about his business as a person. I big respect for him, and I think it's going to be a very hard fight. I'll we'll train as always, day like a challenger. So I, I put my belt away, but I had to bring it out for the day. But it's, uh, it's this one. I'm nervous about this fight as well because I know this could be my last big shot at anything. So. I know I need to perform, and if I don't perform, if I turn up the way I turn up at the last two British title fights, then I won't run. There's, there's no two ways about it, so I know I need to. I'm putting the pressure on myself, and I kind of respond to that when I do that, so I need to perform 100% to win this fight. If I don't, if I'm any less, I'm going to get beat. And I just don't, I don't even want to think about getting beat the now, so I'm training hard, we're sparring good, and I know the Curtis uh, is going to be a right tough fight. I watched his last fight, I watched his last few fights. And he's, a, he's one tough boy, so it's going to be good. Tickets have flew My tickets are gone. So as soon as people hear us fighting Curtis for a, a, a two-title fight, off the way. They're actually, I've started to get mad, but there's nothing, so she felt like a big arena already. I know. But no, great, I'm looking forward to it, and I believe we'll put on a great fight for the fans, and you just need to look at everybody that's on this bill. It's got, it's got some show, you've got every grudge matches, title fights, prospects, so it's going to be a cracker. Brilliant. Thanks, Willie. It's, uh, it's going to be a great fight. Just to talk briefly about the, the Brayhead Arena, obviously with the Commonwealth Games up here, we were fairly limited and the, the slot we were given from Sky Sports because of the World Cup football 
was Friday, June the 27th. So Brayhead was uh, really our only option. More than happy to go there. It's a wonderful arena. Um, Ricky's boxed there several occasions. And um, unfortunately for us, it does only hold around 6,000. And we've already had over 3,000 in pre-orders from fighters. So um, they go on sale today and we expect a quick set out and a, a wonderful atmosphere. Um, just obviously to say a few words, I'd like us all to welcome back on a part of new era, a new journey, two-time champion of the world, Ricky Burns. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you as all for coming down today. Um, as Eddie said, big turnout, um, and especially a big thank you to uh, all the fans um, that came to that last fight. Um, the atmosphere there was unbelievable, and I'm sure myself and all the other boxers were hoping to, um, that they all come out and show their support and the same again. Um, I don't know much about the guy that I'm fighting. Um, I know he's ranked number nine in the WBC. <coughs> Um, I know he's undefeated, he's a southpaw, um, but my new trainer, um, Tony, he's already had a look at him um, and he's already started sourcing out um, sparring partners and stuff, so I know whatever happens, or whatever, whatever happens um, on the night, I know I'm going to be ready for it, as always. Um, again, for this fight, I think I've got a point to prove um, with myself more than anything. Um, after the last fight, what... People, everybody's obviously entitled to their opinion, but everybody was coming out and saying, oh, Ricky Burns, he's a, he's a short fighter. Um, but, you know, that's not the case. This has just made me even more determined um, to make sure I go out here and I can, I've can definitely got a, th a third world title in me. So um, this is just the, the stepping stone to it. Thanks, Ricky. And you can all see that Essex tan glowing <laughs> off Ricky Burns. It's unbelievable. I've never seen a man so happy down, down in Essex, but... We can't wait for Ricky's uh, return to the ring, June the 27th, um, as we chase that green and gold WBC belt, which we hope to achieve this year. Just want to thank everyone for coming. We'll be down here for a lot of further promotional activity in due course. Tell everyone, June the 27th, Friday, Brayhead Arena. Tickets on sale today. Um, all the fighters up here, available for one-on-ones for all the media and um, anyone who wants photos, etc. Thanks so much, as always, for your support. We can't wait to be back in Glasgow. Thank you very much.